All right. Looks like we've got everybody. And my PC wants to keep restarting. All right, we will call the meeting to order at 9.05. And there you are, Robert Donovic. Would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, Madam President. All right, if we can all please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Council Member Donovic. Good evening and welcome to the April 26, 2021 study, study session of Livonia City Council. This meeting sets the agenda for the 1920th regular meeting, a voting meeting that will take place on Monday, May 10th, 2021. We uh, have all members of the council with us this evening, except for council member Jolly. Uh, I have uh, no announcements to make. Does anyone in council have any announcements to make? I, if the clerk is not back yet, I will make one on behalf of the clerk for anyone who was not with us in the first meeting. A reminder that our the Livonia School uh, bond renewal election is this coming Tuesday, May 4th. The polls are open from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. Absentee ballots are in the mail. They may be requested at the city clerk's office until Monday at 5, Susan. Is that correct? Four. Four o'clock on Monday. So Monday at four o'clock. And we will be open on Saturday from eight to four. All right. Thank you for that. I, I missed that. This is a study meeting. There will be no votes taken at this meeting. The council members will, however, offer offer either one resolution or a combination of resolutions for each of the resolutions offered may include an approving, denying, or referring resolution to a committee or city department for its report and recommendation. A resolution of no further action may also be offered. There are some items that will simply be received and placed on file for the information of the city council. Please note that all of the items on tonight's agenda will move on to the regular, to the agenda of, for the regular meeting of Monday, May 10th, 2021, where they will officially be voted upon. If you would like to participate any of the agenda items that are taken up this evening, please use the raise your hand button on Zoom or press star nine on your phone when that item is called and you will be recognized at the appropriate time. Generally, the petitioner, whether that is the city or a private entity, will make the initial presentation followed by those followed by remarks from those in the audience who wish to speak. When you are called upon, please state your name and address for the record so that the remarks may be properly attributed to you in the minutes. It will also let the council members and those joining us via Zoom and at home know who is speaking to them. And just a reminder that um, to unmute yourself, joining us on the phone, you use uh, star six. And we will begin with the real of Stephanie, Stephanie Blatt Real, and I will ask for a correction on that name to the Plymouth Road Development Authority. This comes to us from the Office of the Mayor for a three-year term, which will expire on May 16, 2024. Do we have someone from the, uh, LaShawn, I'm sorry. Good evening. Hi, I'm sorry. I couldn't find the raised hand fast enough. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Um, good evening, um, Council. Um, I am happy to present Stephanie Blatt for reappointment to the Plymouth Road Development Authority. Stephanie Blatt is the Community Affairs Manager for Consumers Energy, Michigan's largest energy provider. She proudly serves Wayne, Washtenaw, and Monroe counties, working with key stakeholders, local governments, and customers to build relationships and foster partnerships between the company and communities in Southeast Michigan. An active community member, Stephanie sits on the boards of both the Monroe County Business Development Corporation and also the Livonia Chamber of Commerce. Stephanie holds a bachelor's degree in political science from Syracuse University's Maxwell School, as well as a certificate of completion from the American University, Washington, D.C. semester program in American politics. I believe that Stephanie is on the call and would like to make a few remarks. 
Very nice. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Thomas. Let's see. I'm looking for Stephanie. Let's see. Uh, Stephanie, if you are there, if you could please, if you're on the phone, if you could please press uh, star nine, or if you're on Zoom, if you could use the raise your hand function. Well, we oh, she said she's, I'm sorry, Council President McIntyre. Oh, she said she was trying to raise her hand. Um, but I don't. All right. Um, well, I don't see her, so I'm sorry we're not able to hear from her, but you certainly get, did a very nice and thorough job in her presentation. So, um, now, do you have any questions? Uh, Council Member White. I have no questions. I will offer approving and consent if there's no objection. All right. Um, I see no objections. We'll place that on cons consent. And uh, Ms. Thomas, if, uh, and, and is it, it says Blatt, is it real? I, I'm not sure which name is preferred, Blatt or real, and I may be pronouncing, you know, pronouncing it incorrectly. But if you would, if you would uh, tell Ms. Blatt that we would be delighted if she, would like to join us at the regular. She doesn't have to, it's on the consent, but um, we could pull it off the consent if she wants to uh, address council. Okay, I will do that. Thank, Thank you very much. Item number two is a request to approve a governmental agreement between the Charter County of Wayne and the City of Livonia. This comes to us from the Department of Recreation for improvements at Bicentennial Park and Clement Circle Pool with the, city, with the city's participation of $100,000. Uh, good evening, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Council President McIntyre, Ted Davis, representing Parks and Recreation. We're asking Council to uh, approve an intergovernmental agreement with Wayne County for a total grant amount of $149,579. We're going to be focusing these funds on two projects. Uh, Bicentennial Park, we will hope we will like to do an installation of a universally accessible playground similar to the structure we installed at Rotary Park several years ago and at Clemens Circle, the replacement of pool furniture. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions council might have on this. Uh, this is a 2021 grant. These funds and these projects would take place during the 21-22 fiscal year. Council member Donovic. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, through the chair, for Mr. Davis, if that's all right. Please. Mr. Davis, I hope all is well. Um, in regards to the pool furniture, uh, I was looking at the packet. Is that just like chairs and tables for the pool and, and um, awnings and whatnot? Or? Yeah, uh, Commissioner Donovan, or sorry, uh, Councilmember Donovan, it is. Um, we're a little limited with some of our funds and the districts uh, that appropriate them and where we can spend them. Uh, I believe for the Clement Circle District, our total grant allotment is around $6,000. So that does limit what we can do. Uh, and that being such a popular amenity in, in that section, in that district, uh, we tend to like, we tend to focus our money at Clement Circle and, and pool furniture. If you've been out there, um, there's never enough. Uh, and probably that way at just about any pool, but especially it seems Clement Circle. So that's uh, our reasoning behind that. Okay, and, and the city will be matching, uh, I, I know it's in some uh, $456,000, uh, but we'll be matching about $100,000, is that correct? That's the plan right now. Um, typically in a fiscal year, we spend about, we try to replace one to two playgrounds a year. So the city from the general fund commits in, in a normal year, uh, one hundred and twenty-five to $200,000 to playground replacement. So this is in line with the normal fiscal year um, general fund allotment. Okay, thank you, Mr. Davis, for answering my questions. You're welcome. Uh, Vice President Barr. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Ted, 
looked through this packet. I've not read it word for word, but in scanning through, it's not clear to me how, what portion of this 456,000 is going towards the bicentennial equipment and uh, what portion is Clement Circle? What's the split? It will be about $450,000 for bicentennial. Okay. Um, oh, you did just say six. Yeah. yeah that's six. Okay. okay. That was about our total project cost for, um, for rotary. And, and we would think a similar size, uh, Playscape and then accessibility features would be appropriate at, Bi at Bicentennial Park. And um, is this at McNamara Park or which which Playscape at Bicentennial are we talking? This would be uh, Ben Salini. Which is, is that the one on the west edge of the park? Um, east edge, uh, the southernmost each at east, eastern edge. So right off of Seven Mile, the parking lot right oh, there. I thought that was called McNamara Park. I must just have my names wrong. Okay. All right. Oh, hey, one more question. Do you know how old the Playscape is that's there currently? Uh, different features are different ages. Uh, that actually has some of the oldest pieces still. Uh, if, you, if you've been there recently, that still has the old style merry-go-round, which they mm -hmm. you know, don't even make parts for anymore. You literally have to I wait for someone else's merry-go-round to kind of uh, implode and then uh, piece it together from those parts. Um, uh, most of that structure is about uh, 21, 22 years old, most of the pieces there. So are you just replacing the large structure? Or are you replacing, I, I am very familiar with that park. Are you placing all the equipment in that park or just the large structure? Um, we haven't decided on a, on a site plan yet. Um, I think we'd probably go in and evaluate each individual piece. Um, I mean, I take my son there frequently. My youngest, he likes, um, you know, he calls Bicentennial the fire truck park because of the fire truck with the bell, and he really likes that. He also likes the merry-go-round, even though it gives me heart palpitations as a, as a parent and a parks and recreation person. So, I mean, I think we'd go in and look and, and evaluate each individual piece. We don't have a site plan yet, uh, and I think that's something we would have prior to asking, you know, council for an award on this. Okay. And Ted, do you guys have, I've probably asked you this before, but when you talk about replacing one to two play structures a year, do you have a, a packing order all laid out, you know, of all the play structures in the city or? We do. As as okay. Yep, we do. Um, and I mean, it goes by obviously usage, condition, age of the equipment. Uh, we try to factor in as much information and data as we possibly can to make the best possible decisions. Um, and a lot of our usage, you know, this is, is anecdotal is what we see right. when we're out there on, in sites in different playgrounds and, and parks. Uh, this one is, is a very well used amenity. Uh, and the minute we installed Rotary, the kind of calls for why isn't this being done at Bicentennial were immediate. So, I mean, it's taken us a few years and I think this, this project makes a lot of sense. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, Council Member McCullough. Do we have a motion on the floor? We do not. Um, I'll just point out that I'm super excited about all things playgrounds. I hope you get when to when the design process comes that you get one of those spinning globe things. I forget what they're called, but those are fun. But uh, I'd be happy to offer an approval for consent. If there are no objections. Uh, Council Member Donovan. Uh, Madam President, are we going to see Councilman McCullough with one of those spinny globe things in his backyard? Yes, absolutely. I have no problem to be there. Uh, just a, a few uh, comments. Thank you, uh, Council Member McCullough. I know that that playground equipment has been there for a long time because David Culleton, our oldest son, who's now 23, I remember when he was a little, little guy and we were very excited because all of a sudden there were all these new playground features at that park in Bicentennial. So it's been there a long time. Um, I have been on one of the spinny globes. Somewhere there's a photo and video record of it that one of my sons has and uh, it's to go to the grave with me. So, um, but I think this is, I think this is great and exciting. Accessibility in the parks is wonderful. Anybody who who's over at Rotary sees um, how much that park is used. 
by children of every different ability. And I, I think this is just exciting and great. So thank you. Thanks, Council. All right, item number three is an award of bid. This too comes first from the Department of Parks and Recreation for the department branding project as identified in the Vonia Vision 21 budget funds. Just one moment, before I do this, I knew there was something else I had to do. We skipped over audience communication. My apologies, it was not uh, deliberate. It was a function of you know starting these meetings after nine. I'm going to go back, if anyone in the audience would like to communicate with the council on any item not in this evening's uh, uh, study meeting agenda, you, now is your opportunity to do so. And I'm sorry that I went over that I did not do this at the beginning of the meeting. So I'm going to call once, I'm going to call twice, I'm going to call again for audience communication. And seeing none, we will continue with the agenda where we were. And I will reread re this word of bid Department of Parks and Recreation for the Department of Branding Project is identified in Livonia Vision 21 from budget funds. Uh, Mr. Davis, it's a big night for you. This is, thank you, Council President. Uh, hopefully this is the last time I'm speaking tonight. Um, with any luck, it is. Uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation has taken proposals for department rebranding in cooperation with community resources. We received 10 responses uh, and narrowed that field down to two firms for interviews. After interviews, we are recommending the award go to Everwild, whose information, whose proposal is in your packet. Uh, the current logo brand dates back to the early 2000s. It lacks meaning, uh, representation of the department, and clear identification as Livonia Parks and Recreation. Um, simply put, we can do better. We feel it's time for a change. Um, the branding project is identified in Council approved Livonia Vision 21 as part of the Healthy Communities namely objective 4.4, establish a marketing and branding campaign to increase awareness about Livonia's strong quality of life. Uh, the proposed project includes several phases and project deliverables. The initial phase is a discovery phase where Everwild will be learning about Livonia Parks and Recreation, where we currently are, our vision for the future and meetings with stakeholders. We'll then go through a development of brand platform. And, and what they're asking here is what makes us unique and why should people take notice? This is our, they're gonna be telling our story and telling it in a compelling way. It includes a brand mission and vision, brand values, brand promise and implied benefits, and a brand positioning statement. Uh, really what we would call our tagline. Uh, so right now our current tagline has come out in play that was stolen from M Parks. And before that it was creating community through people, parks and programs, which was stolen from California Parks and Recreation in a project that was initially done in the late nineties. So. Some of these have been around for quite some time. Uh, they also will establish a brand identity, which is the visu visual representation of who we are at our core, our logo, color palette, and examples of use. And then finally, a style guide that will develop standards for use to ensure consistency in its application. Uh, again, we are recommending the award of bid go to Everwild, their approach, experience with parks and recreation agencies, and projects such as the 2024 Los Angeles Olympics set them apart. I'm uh, happy to answer any questions council might have on this project. Uh, Vice President Barr. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Ted. Um, so obviously this involves a logo, color palette, you know, the, the def definition, mission, all the things you talked about. Do you envision this being some sort of, um, I mean, obviously the logo will brand magazines and when you're within facilities, but are you envisioning some kind of wayfinding or signage or something that goes along with this? Or is this only focused on just the, the logo and the, the mission statement and those kind of things? So Councilman Barr, that's a great question. I mean, this, this award is only focused on the logo uh, and the development of that, right? And, and how we get to that and, and our mission, our vision, our brand values. I mean, that's, that's what this project is all about right now and does how do you envision what ultimately comes out of this working with the the city branding is this going to be something completely distinct or is there a desire to have those two intertwine somehow i mean i think they'll they will co-mingle they'll coexist um but i mean parks and recreation is one of the biggest you know outward facing departments um and this is, you know, important for us. I mean, we do have an existing logo right now. Uh, again, it, it kind of lacks 
um, it, 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 that you just saw the logo, you would not look at it and say, oh yeah, that's Parks and Recreation. Um, you would look at it and say, it's someone's Nike shoe upside down. Um, is so that the I mean, logo I'm seeing on your, uh, on your image right now? And this, it is, yeah, okay. it is. <laughs> so, I mean, again, I mean, that is, you know, I mean, that's not identifiable for us really. That doesn't represent who parks and recreation is or what we are, or what we provide. Um, and I think that's really what, what you want to get to with this process. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I, I like what you're doing. I, by the way, and I, and I'll offer approving for consent if there's no objection. Um, but I, one of the things I'm excited about with this, if, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going off memory here, but this price tag is quite a bit less than what we spent for the city of Livonia branding effort a few years ago. And um, I'll, I'll just say that I've been, I was underwhelmed by the results of that. And so if, if Parks and Rec can, you know, can do this right and, and at a lower price tag, it appears, if my memory serves me correctly, um, I guess I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, that could help maybe influence what we do on a city level as well. I, 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 please respond to this if you have a thought to it, but um, I, it, it seems to make sense to me that there'd be consistency from the city and parts of rec. Like they're, I, I'm all about the, the branding that you're talking about, but it, it doesn't make a ton of sense to me that you'd have a distinct brand for parks and rec versus the city of Livonia. Um, so I'm offering a cons approval for consent. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with, but um, those are just some of my thoughts. Thanks. Councilmember Danovic. I think Councilmember Danovic is frozen. Frozen. Either that or he just fell asleep at 5 30 in the morning or whatever it is. Exactly. <laughs> um, we're going to give Councilmember Danovic a moment here to regroup and reload. I will uh, note that. Uh, Council Member Toy has, I believe, is still with us by phone. She has a uh, problem in her house, maybe a suspected gas leak, and she's in her car. So I guess we should have had Stephanie Blatt from Consumers Energy on with us to uh, <laughs> to help explain uh, the situation. I'm just kidding, but um, that's why Council Member Toy is not still with us on Zoom. All right, let's see if we have. It now appears that we've lost council, council member Donovic. So if we're not able to get him back, um, I would I would suggest that we don't put this on the consent, that we put it on the regular and then we give him an opportunity to weigh in if that's, if everyone's agreeable to that. All right, so we'll place this on the regular agenda and if no one else has any questions, we will, uh, Forge forward, and I will note. I think if Council Member Toy is still with us on the phone, then we're at five. And even if she's, I assume she's on the phone. We, even if she's not, we still have a quorum. Wanted to make sure everyone knew that we were still good and in compliance with quorum requirements. All right, item number four is request for authorization to purchase one case 580SN backhoe to. I don't know if that's two wheel drive. I don't know what two WD stands for of tractors through the source well contract, formerly NGPA. This comes to us from the public service division be used by the roads department from budget of funds. Good evening, uh, Mr. Moore. Oh, let's see. There we go. Doug, you should be able to, there we go. Oh. Good. I was wondering what I was doing wrong. Good evening, Council. This is Doug Moore with the Public Works Department of Public Works. Uh, first item before you tonight for us is the purchase of a backhoe. It was approved in the 2021 departmental capital budget. The two two WD is two wheel drive, so you were right. Um, this is to uh, be assigned to the roads maintenance section, but it will be available for all sections of DPW used to, to use it. It's being purchased through Sourcewell, which is formerly the NGAPA contract. Uh, Southeastern Equipment out of Novi will be the servicing dealer. 
The, an older backhoe whose repair costs are exceeding their value will be disposed of through the auction process. And the purchase cost is $97,882.06. And if you have any questions, I'm available. All right, uh, Council Member McCullough. Madam President, uh, I'd be happy to offer an approving for consent. These are a cooperative purchasing agreement from budgeted funds. Uh, everything seems in line. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Uh, anyone else? All right, we'll move on. I'll just add a little historical fact. I almost went to work for Case Tractor and just think if I would have, I wouldn't be here tonight, but I would be somehow still uh, tied into the Livonia City Council. So. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I thought you'd all appreciate that little factoid. Moving right along, item number five is a request for authorization to purchase 10 Ford F10 Ford 2021 F250 pickup trucks through the state of Michigan Macomb County bid process. This too comes first from the Public Works Division for use by the Parks, Roads, and Building Maintenance sections. Mr. Moore. Good evening, Council. Again, uh, the department is trying something a little bit different this time. Normally we send these up by section. This year we're sending them up by the fund. These are all being purchased out of the capital fund, uh, the general fund. Um, seven of the trucks are in the 2021 approved capital budget. Three of the trucks are were in the 2020 capital budget and are being carried forward uh, due to the coronavirus. The funding of those trucks was brought forward. We weren't able to get them in time last year. Three of the trucks will be used in the road maintenance section. Six trucks will be used in parks maintenance and one truck will be used in building maintenance. The trucks are being purchased through the state bid process from Signature Ford of Owasso in the amount of $289,370 for the 10 trucks. The outfitting of the truck will consist of plows, light packages, spray and bed liners. Uh, a couple of the trucks are getting uh, lift gates tailgates and uh, onboard air compressors. The cost for these will be $204,324.83 for the 10 trucks. Uh, the vehicles that are being replaced will be auctioned or disposed of through the auction process. The ages of those trucks range from 10 to 12 years old and due to plowing snow, it's really tough on the trucks. So they're aging. Uh, the department is asking council to approve the purchase of the 10 trucks from the two mentioned vendors in the amount of $493,694.83. And I'm available for questions. Council Member McCullough. Madam President, um, everything seems in order. I do have one question, if I may, through the chair to Mr. Moore. Please. Well, these vehicles that, you know, I know obviously we've got the new uh, DPW facility starting to look pretty awesome. Um, would these be under roof? Pickups will not. Um, they'll be assigned depending on where. Some of them might be assigned at Civic Center. Uh, it could be at Bicentennial or Greenmead. But the pickup trucks will not be under roof. It's the, the dump trucks, the vectors, the bigger trucks that will be parked in the two barns. Gotcha. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Council Member Donovic. Thank you, Madam President, to the chair, to Mr. Moore. What happens to the vehicles that are no longer going to be used since we're going to be using the newer trucks? They will be sent to auction. Uh, normally, lately, they're being sent to the auction company that's on Telegraph Road between uh, Schoolcraft or I-96 and Five Mile there on the east side. I, the name eludes me. Thank you, Mr. Moore. All right. Anything else? All right. We'll place that on consent. And uh, moving right along. Thank you, Council. Have a good night, Mr. Thank Russell. Thank you, Doug. Request to approve a three-year contract extension with HydroCorp Services for the cross-connection control program. This comes to us from the Public Works Division to perform all work necessary, necessary to complete the program requirements in an amount not to exceed $66,276 annually from budgeted funds.
Uh, council? Or is, was there someone from the administration that was gonna speak to this or not? Oh, good point. Uh, sorry, there's Mr. Rushlow, sorry. I skipped ahead a little bit. Sorry about that, Jacob. Oh, that's okay, no problem at all. Good evening, Council, Jacob Rushlow uh, with Department of Public Works. Yes, this, um, this item before you is for uh, the water system cross-connection control program, which is necessary to reduce the risk of contamination to the public water supply, which could occur if questionable water leaves a private facility's plumbing and enters the public water supply system through backflow. So this program uh, applies to private facilities, including industrial and commercial process facilities that use water um, like pools and irrigation systems and include uh, periodic on-site inspections and testing at over 3,300 water accounts across the city. Hydrocorp has managed the city's cross-connection control program since 2010. They have a very extensive knowledge of our system. They have gained an excellent reputation with these private facilities that require inspections uh, ongoing and testing in those buildings. Uh, for those reasons, we recommend that city council proceed to approve a three-year contract extension with Hydro, excuse me, Hydrocorp services through April 30th of 2024 and authorize an expenditure from budgeted funds in the amount of $66,276 annually. And with that, I would be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Council. Uh, Council Member White. This is a very well-respected company. They do good work for the city of Wilhelmia. This is a crucial part of our infrastructure and I'm happy to offer an approving resolution on consent. All right, we'll place that on consent. There are no objections, thank you. Uh, next item is a waiver petition. This comes to us from a petition regarding petition 2021-01-02-01 submitted by Stein Investment Company, LLC, requesting approval to develop and operate a climate controlled indoor self storage facility on property located on the north side of Plymouth Road between Sears Drive and Merriman Road 31100 Plymouth Road in the southwest quarter of section 26. Mr. I don't know if Mr. Chairman is going to address this or we've got our petitioner, Mr. Uh, Gaber. Mr. Gaber? Yes, good evening, City Council, John Gaber. Um, I believe that Mr. Tormina was going to address this first to give you a, uh, an overview yeah, of the that, presentation. Yeah, that's, that's usually what happens, and I don't see him. Um, let's see. Oh, there's, um, let's see if we can, summons up Mark. Uh, this is very unusual because usually Mark is always with us and ready to go. We can see his box on the screen, but yeah, we just uh, we just can't. Madam President, I just called up to his office. His Zoom crashed. He's trying to get back on. Okay. Called up there to him. But he's trying. Looks like he's off completely now. Madam President, is, do you yes. think we can maybe proceed with the petitioner well, anyway? Or we're yeah, Mr. Graber, maybe you could give us an overview. We're waiting for Mr. Terramina. Sure, thank you. Uh, good evening, Council. It's a pleasure to be in front of you this evening. My name is John Gaber. I'm the attorney for uh, for the applicant. Uh, my address is 380 North Old Woodward, Suite 300, Birmingham 48009. And with me, I have uh, some members from our, our team as well. Uh, Daniel Ginberg and, and Jason Linscott are here from Stein Investment Company. Um, and I'm going to hand the floor over to uh, to Jason too after a few comments um, <clears throat> because he can give you more on the you know the actual plans and the operation of the facility than I can 
Um, as an overview, just want to you know mention uh, a few things that, that this is an adaptive reuse of this office building uh, for an indoor climate controlled self storage facility. Um, you know, by my clients, uh, my clients have have done this. Uh, they they've put up about 35 facilities of this type uh, throughout the country. Many of them are redevelopment type of facilities like this. And I believe you've seen in, in your packet of, of information, there are some before and after photos of some of the sites that they've had an opportunity to, to work on. And one thing that's, that's somewhat unique about them, uh, and we think uh, is, is beneficial to the community, is that not only do they develop these facilities, but they also manage and operate these facilities on an ongoing basis. They don't sell them, they retain these these self-storage facilities uh, in their portfolio. So that leads them to essentially, uh, you know, build a quality product or redevelop a building in a quality fashion that's gonna be operational and, and essentially exactly what, what's needed for, for their business purposes. Um, Mr. Linscott can go into that too. I will mention, uh, he's going to have a few comments for you in terms of the market, because it's always a question as to, you know, what does the market analysis show and, and is there an, an unserved uh, population and a demand for these type of facilities? And Mr. Linscott will go in, into that portion of the, uh, the project as well. Um, and then finally, I, I can answer any questions with respect to the waiver use criteria uh, because on the waiver use criteria, there are 11 specific criteria that apply to indoor climate control self-storage facilities. Uh, we meet every one of these criteria. I don't know if you want me to go through them, but I, I can if, if, uh, if you so desire. So with that, I'd, I'd like to turn the floor over to Jason Linscott. Uh, we're at a little bit of a disadvantage because Mr. Tormina was going to show you all of the, uh, the plans and the drawings and such to, to give you the visual aids to, to assist with this. Um, and we don't have that opportunity right now, but, but Jason, I think you can tell them, uh, you know, in some detail about the, the project and the plans, what's intended both from a redevelopment standpoint and an operational standpoint for this facility, if you could, please. Will do. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, good evening, Council. This is uh, Jason Lenscott with Stein Investment Group. Um, address is 5607 Glen Ridge Drive in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it is, I guess it'll be a little bit difficult here to, to not be able to show you, show you um, the drawings um, and site plan, but um, I can, I'll definitely do my best here to describe it. And I know you each have a packet, I believe, uh, that has all the information in it. So, um, um, so this is a uh, this is a project that is uh, in the vacant former AT and T occupied office building on Plymouth Road, uh, just east of Merriman Road, uh, on the north side of Plymouth Road. Uh, the the building's been vacant for uh, five five or six years or so. It was once occupied by AT and T, who is the original occupant. Um, and uh, we, as um, as uh, Mr. Gaber mentioned, we are planning to repurpose the building uh, for interior climate controlled self storage. Um, so I'll, I'll just pause there for just a moment and uh, I'll do this briefly because I know we're bringing up the end of your agenda tonight for a long night, <laughs> but. Um, Excuse me, this, um, sure. I, I just, I just want to say that, um, that it's not, it, it, it no, it's, it's not through any fault of your own that you're at the end of the agenda and we, you have our full, uh, attention. And again, this isn't your, you know, this is, this is because meetings go long. So please don't feel that you have to rush through this. Um, you know, this is your time. So thank okay. you, but you know, this is your time and we're here to do this. Great, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, do you want me to continue or do you want Mark, Mark, do you want to um, maybe take over for a moment and show the screen? What's best here? Uh, if you give me one minute, I will be able to share the screen. And I apologize for that, Council. For whatever reason, my computer crashed at the worst possible time. Uh, no apologies necessary, Mark. You, uh, we were all astounded when you weren't there immediately. I think you well, you know that there's been even like a blip that Mark Tiramina hasn't been on it. So. Yeah. We figured some disaster would be falling you. 
Okay, can everyone see the screen? And I don't know, was that Mr. Gaber, I assume, who was just speaking with you? To, to yes. You? Okay, so, um, and I don't know how much background was provided, uh, and you can see the screen, is that correct? Yep. Uh, so, former AT&T site on Plymouth Road, just east of uh, Merriman Road. I think most everyone is familiar with this property. <clears throat> the the parcel is about five acres in size and has quite a bit of frontage on Plymouth Road, roughly 738 uh, feet of frontage. Uh, the building is three levels, contains a gross floor area of about 115,000, 114,000 uh, square feet. Um, and as everyone I think knows as well, uh, this building uh, is vacant and has been uh, mostly vacant for uh, several years. Uh, the redevelopment involves uh, really the, at least as part of this uh, initial phase for this project, the westerly three acres of the property, the, uh, the easterly, the remaining easterly portion, uh, which is mostly parking uh, today, is not part of this project and that would be reserved for uh, future development. Uh, the property is surrounded by commercial properties. Uh, the, another unique aspect about this building is the fact that uh, there is no level at, um, at ground level. Uh, so uh, the lower level of the building is about six feet below the ground elevation. The, the middle level is about six feet above and then you have a, a level above that. So, so each floor plate is about 38,000 square feet all three floors would be used for um, an indoor self, self climate, or excuse me, self storage uh, facility. Uh, this does, this is treated as a, a waiver use. There are 11 special requirements that apply to the use. I won't go over all of them. I'll just say that the, uh, the couple of the, probably the most prominent um, items would be the fact that uh, it requires a minimum of three acres, which this request uh, meets. Um, there can only be one building uh, devoted uh, for the purpose of self storage, which obviously uh, it would be the case here. No outside storage is allowed. Uh, access to all of the units must be from within the building. The hours of operation are limited uh, between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. And then the uh, exterior of the building should be uh, primarily uh, maintenance free materials. So what's unique about this project, as I mentioned, is really dealing with the uh, the, the, the grades uh, of this, uh, the, the floor elevations, uh, if, if you will. Uh, and in order to um, uh, provide access to each of the levels, there, there'll be an elevator tower constructed at the back of the building. So this, this portion here is actually in addition to the uh, structure, it would increase the size, not by a great deal, only about a um, thousand square feet additionally, but what it does is it provides ramps for trucks to access the building, to access elevator towers, providing uh, uh, access uh, to all three levels of the building. This ramp along the, uh, the, the far north part of the site, uh, this is actually a canopy overhead. Uh, this ramp goes down and then back up again to allow vehicles to uh, come down to the lowest level of the, of the building uh, where there would be um, a corridor accessing the elevators uh, for the middle level, there's a, a ramp only going up to a similar canopy overhead and access to the same uh, group of, uh, of elevators. So uh, dealing with the, the, the building uh, was going to require quite extensive modifications, both in, inside the building as well as you can see here, uh, the exterior uh, along the back of the, the building. Um, the building currently is set back about 60 feet from the right of way of Plymouth Road. Um, a little bit less than that. Uh, the, the ordinance does require 60 uh, feet. Um, the Planning Commission uh, spent quite a bit of time looking at uh, the, the property uh, in terms of how it would be impacted by the uh, development. Doesn't require a lot of parking as you uh, would, could well imagine this type, this, this use. Uh, there would be some spaces provided along the east side of the, uh, the building uh, for probably very limited staff as well as uh, customers uh, to the site the sales and leasing office would be located here in the northeast corner of the site 
or where there uh, would be a small addition provided to the building. And that's the one area of the building that's actually at grade level. Um, this, uh, they provided some, uh, some general floor plan showing how the uh, corridors uh, would be laid out. These are basically the existing corridors, but how the, uh, the what were previously the call center and office areas would be converted to uh, the, uh, the units. As far as the exterior of the building, um, the, it's, it's primarily brick um, along the facade. Uh, there is the existing entry, main entry and, and uh, lobby area to the building. Uh, that would be modified um, as part of their brand identity here uh, where they would, um, they, they can explain it, but the glazing here uh, would, would be maintained. It would not serve uh, as an entrance uh, but more as a, uh, a feature to the building, uh, identifying it as a self-storage uh, facility. Uh, the, um, the upper the portion of the building would be renovated to include uh, new EFIS. Uh, fiber cement panels would be uh, provided along the, uh, the sides uh, of the uh, building. Uh, Spandrel glass or EFIS would be used to cover the windows along the front. There would be some glazing, as I indicated here, where the lobby existed. Um, I'll show you one last thing, and, and I know it might be a little difficult to understand how this, uh, how, how the access along the back operates. So this, this is what it would look like from the rear of the building where these uh, green lines would represent the canopies. Uh, but if you can see this line going down and going back up again, that's where the, um, the ramps would be provided to the lower level of the uh, building uh, where this dashed line uh, essentially represents of uh, the, the finished floor elevation of the lower part of the building. Uh, and then this ramp going up, which is separate from this, uh, these ramps going down and up uh, for the lower level, this ramp going up is to access the middle level of the building. And this line, this dash line represents the finished floor elevation generally of, uh, of that middle level. Of course, the only way to access the upper level units would be uh, via the elevator um, that would be added. So. With that, I'll answer any questions. I, I believe Mr. Gaber and others uh, with the company would like to show you some additional slides. And I will point out uh, one last thing. The only modification to the requirements that made by the Planning Commission were with respect to the hours of operation. Uh, the petitioner in this case is asking that the hours be extended uh, from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. And that uh, recommendation was um, supported by the Planning Commission. Thank you. Mr. Linscott, do you want to continue with uh, with your discussion, please? Yes, absolutely. Great, thank you. Well, it was very timely, Mark, and uh, very, very well done. Um, thank you very much. Um, so um, <clears throat> I'll back up for just a moment. Um, so just to, to kind of introduce you guys to who we are, uh, we're an Atlanta, Georgia-based uh, family real estate company. Uh, we, we develop and own real estate um, really all over the Southeast, Midwest, and Mid-Atlantic, uh, and we are retail primarily retail and self-storage are, are the two uh, commercial real estate products that we we own and manage. Um, self-storage is is uh, something we've been doing for, for I don't know, 12 or 13 years, and we've done three and a half or four million square feet of this type of product. Uh, we Our approach to self-storage has always been um, a little bit more retail-minded, um, so we, we, we believe this product and others do as well. We're not the only ones, we're not inventing this concept, but we just see it as a retail product. This is something for um, the community, and this is a you know our, our customers are the consumers. Um, as as John said, John Gaber said at the beginning, um, the space shop here is our brand. Um, so that's something that that's our management company and our brand. So when we build these, we build them to our standards, um, and then we manage own and manage them ourselves with with our uh, with our staff. Um, <clears throat> and this would be no different. Uh, we're we're very proud of these facilities. We. We put a lot of effort into making them sort of best in class uh, and sort of recognize that way uh, in all the places that we go and do these do these facilities. It's also been kind of uh, it's, it's been a pleasure to uh, we've done a lot of ground up facilities um, you know where we build a brand new building. Uh, we've also done a lot of building uh, re um, sort of repurposing of existing buildings, which is what we're doing here, uh, and it's they're. Like, a little, they're a lot of fun to do because you, you sort of take an existing building that has some functional obsolescence to it, some issue, uh, and we fix it 
And, and most of these buildings like this one have big parking fields that are also just completely unused. So the nice thing about the self-storage business is we don't need much parking. Uh, we really will end up with somewhere re between 12 and 14 trips a day through the facility. Uh, and those customers generally will be in the rear doing any kind of loading uh, at those loading areas that, that uh, Mark was describing. Uh, so we don't really use very much parking. So that enables us to then use the other part of the site for some other type of development. Um, generally, we can activate that with some type of retail or other, other new use that wasn't previously uh, possible because of the parking requirement of the, the building that is now functionally obsolete. So we've done buildings like Toys R Us's and Kmart's and office buildings uh, bowling alleys, you name it, um, all types of buildings that just um, had great bones, uh, just were, were sort of functionally obsolete. Um, you know, this building is is super unique. Uh, in, in all my years, I really haven't seen an office building of this size built like this. You know, as, uh, as Mark described, it doesn't have uh, a floor at grade. So when you walk in the building, it's, a, it's like walking to a split level home. You walk in and you either go downstairs or upstairs. Uh, which is pretty unique for an office building. You know, if you want to use an office building to put a bunch of people in it, it's pretty unusual to not have a floor that's at least at grade uh, for access. So um, it was a bit of a challenge to try and figure this one out. Um, and I think we we have a great we have a great design here, uh, and we're we're really happy with it. Um, you know, primarily, and I, I do kind of want to address one quick thing that Mark said um, when we talk about access in the back. Ninety nine percent of our customers and our vehicle access here are are the community members and their vehicles is typically their, their car, their SUV, their minivan, those types of things, maybe a small trailer, um, but it's that's that's 99% of the access here uh, and what our customers will be doing. Every once in a while we get a large truck, but it's 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 not that not that common, um, but it does happen from time to time. Um, if you want, um, if you don't mind, um, I think, is it, Mark, are you driving the presentation? Thank you. Uh, would you go to those before and after slides? Uh, so um, that you were on just a moment ago. So these are just a couple of examples I wanted to show you guys of what we do when we take an existing facility and or existing building and improve it. So this, this for example, was a was actually an old car dealership. Um, here you can see this is sort of the before, the after is the next slide, uh, which shows the, the resulting facility. You know, this particular community wanted this to look like a retail building on the left. And in fact, some of those are retail suites. Um, on the left, so this is a, a different um, scenario, but you can sort of see the before and after, and I'll, I'll go through these quickly, but uh, this was a Kmart, actually a closed Kmart on the left, um, which we, uh, this is the new facade of that, that Kmart. This is in Charles, near Charleston, South Carolina. Um, really turned out nice. This is an old bowling alley. Um, this community wanted us to look a little bit more modern, so we did that, and then we um, improved it. Um, and I think the next one is uh, an old office building, actually. Um, if you don't mind flipping to the next one. Yeah, this is an old office building, three stories, pretty similar to this situation, although this one um, really didn't have as good of bones. It didn't look so good. Um, it needed a complete redo. Um, so that building turned into to this. Um, um, and then I think there's a couple more. This was an older uh, sort of gymnasium looking building that had some storage in it that we we put a whole new facade on new new uh new materials so that, hopefully that gives you sort of a just a uh, oh there's one more here that was an old furniture store that we converted into a new building as well um kind of you can sort of see sort of the the um the, the difference between the before and after and the whole idea with these is you know when you when you come in and repurpose a building it's really important to make it look like it was purpose built uh, that it was it was built for what you're doing so you, if you can see in some of those afters, none of those buildings look like we just stuck a sign on it um, and said, hey, you know, come in and put your things in here. Um, and they look purpose built. They look like they were built for that reason. Um, and this is this is no different. So on this building, um, the brick and the architecture of the building really has a lot of great features and characteristics to it. So we're going to use those uh, and just sort of continue forward. We put these big, a little bit more dramatic elements uh, in the middle and on the ends. Um, and what we're doing here is that the middle part that's glass is actually all completely new. So we're gonna remove the existing glass vestibule that's there today and replace it with more modern storefront and modern, modern glass. Um, and then the gray horizontal between the doors is, is a Nietzsche Ha product, which is like a, a fiber cement, but it has a wood grain to it. So it looks like sort of gray wood. Um, it's a really nice product. Uh, and that's what's on the ends also, the large gray vertical elements on, the, on, the, on each book ending the left and right sides of the, the building. 
Um, and then um, <clears throat> if you'd like, I can, uh, I think Mark did a really nice job of describing the, the loading in the rear. I'm happy to answer questions on that, but I, I won't sort of repeat what he, what he said. Um, the, um, and I, I, I'll sort of switch over real quick to um, why we like this site. Um, this, you know, I, I talked to you about how, we, why we like the building, um, why we like to repurpose buildings like this and where it makes sense. Um, however, it only makes sense to do these where uh, we find an undersupply of the product that we provide to the community. Uh, it doesn't do any good for us to invest all this money in, in a community and then um, they're not, they're, they're not be demand for the product. Um, so we do a pretty detailed analysis. Uh, we do a very detailed analysis on uh, supply and demand saturation, and we sort of study trade areas and figure out where there are those imbalances and in, in saturation. Uh, and, and this market is one of those that has an undersupply of this type of product uh, in it. Uh, the, the, the trade area here, and, and when I say trade area, what we do is we sort of know where our customers will come from, what type of um, um, radius they will come from, so to speak. And it's not necessarily a circle, right? It, it, we study traffic patterns and where the schools are and the grocery and uh, to and from work and those sorts of things and, and figure out how a community function, how the traffic flow functions. Um, uh, but the trade area here has about five, including our facility, because we have to include our facility in our analysis if we're going to build it, uh, has about five square feet per capita. So that's total self-storage product. Uh, and a lot of those are uh, what we would call class C facilities, meaning the outdoor drive up older facilities. So if you can envision the, the older style self-storage product with a um, you know, fence around it and all outdoor drive up storage, uh, the newer, you know, interior climate controlled product with climate protected loading, uh, which is what this is. Um, there's there's uh, about two square feet per capita in this trade area, uh, including including our facility. If we were to build this facility, which is really it's very low, uh, a market like this, you'd expect to see something closer to seven square feet per capita. So it shows that there's a there's an undersupply of that. And when I say that demand, I, I'm happy to get into it if you guys would like. I don't want to bore you with it, but um, there's a lot of things that go into that demand analysis, uh, everything from demographics uh, to housing stock, what type of houses there are, other types of storage facilities, and, and so on and so forth, and of course, climate and things like that. So there's a, there's, there's, there's a lot of analysis that goes into that, and I'm happy to talk, uh, speak to that stuff uh, if you'd like to. Um, that's sort of the general overview of uh, the... Um, reason we like this market, um, the city, and this particular site. Um, I think I'll stop there and just answer questions. Um, hopefully I've covered um, the main points here, but of course um, I see there's already a question and I'm happy to answer those. Thank you. Um, thank you. Council member, Mark, did you want to add anything else for did, Anyone else from the petitioner side want to add anything else before I go to council? All right, council member McCullough. Madam President, I, I just, uh, I guess it'd probably be uh, through the chair to petitioner, um, you know, just a kind of a general statement. I, I think, you know, anytime you have a building, and I've seen this building sit there, you know, over the course of five years. So having a development come in there and repurpose a building uh, has the ability to spark more development that goes, you know, both east, west, north, south. I even think there's a couple um, uh, commercial buildings to the east that, uh, that are vacant. So I love to see this kind of development. Uh, my question to the petitioner, I know you guys do a lot of market analysis, but you know, a lot of things that, uh, at least my short time on council, I think we've approved two other storage facilities. Is the market that great for uh, th this type of business? Obviously it is if you guys are coming in there, uh, but uh, it, again, I, you know, I, I don't see any other reason to not support this. It's something that's gonna revitalize the existing area, but that was just kind of my general question. Sure, um, thank you for that. Thank you very much. Um, it, uh, the answer to your question is yes. Um, I, I know it seems like uh, it, it's been an interesting, um, I would say, 10 years for the self-storage industry. Um, there's been a number of facilities, you know, a lot of facilities built over the years. And a lot of that has been, uh, there's a couple, you know, there's a lot of discussion on why and why there's so much demand for the product. But, you know, this is, it really is sort of a new product. 
Uh, when you walk in the office here and you walk in the facility, it feels really good. Our offices are, it feels sort of more like hotel lobbies. I mean, there's a coffee bar with free coffee or Keurig if you want to make a coffee. You know, there's free water for customers. The, the office just feels really nice. Um, and the facility feels really nice. There's music playing and, you know, it's well lit. It's the climate control feels really good. And I think people feel comfortable. Um, you know, that, that sort of seven square feet per capita over um, that sort of the demand profile is historically been what it is. There's a, it, uh, there's a lot of studies going on now. And actually what's happening is that that number is actually going up. People are using these products more. I did answer your question, Council Member McCullough. It did. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, sure. Council Member Donovan. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I too am uh, really excited for this project. I've been driving by this building for as long as I can remember since I was just a little kid, and uh, it's it's always been this big building. And I knew AT and T was there, and then it wasn't there, and it's had a tenant since, and, and uh, it's really just sat vacant for such a long time. Uh, what really excites me is the fact that uh, potentially in the future that the lot can be split and the large parking lot to the east could also uh, see something done to it. Uh, kind of like uh, Councilman McCullough had mentioned earlier about the buildings to the east that are they're, they're vacant right now and have been for some time or have kind of been struggling to keep tenants there. So hopefully this can uh, uh, revitalize uh, this mile area right there. Um, I did have a question, uh, looking through the packet, there was a 9 p.m. and the 10 p.m. and then uh, Mr. Tormina had mentioned uh, that the petition was asking for 10 p.m. Um, is that a big issue you see Mr. Tormina extending to 10 p.m.? Is that something you're worried about or what do you foresee being an issue there? I do not. Uh, Planning Commission really did not have uh, issue with uh, extending uh, uh, the hours. Uh, the, the, really, there's no impact to any residential area or sensitive land uses in the immediate area. So I think it was felt that that that, that ask was uh, was pretty innocuous, uh, not and, and just for clarification, the 10 p.m. or 9 p.m. whatever it happens to be. Um, does that mean that nobody can enter the building, uh, like customer wise, or is this just like for office staff, the office has to be shut down. Everybody has to leave sort of thing. It would apply to customers as well. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm definitely in support of this. Uh, I'm really excited for, for this potential project. It was awesome to see some of the past projects the petitioner has worked on and the quality of workmanship they, they bring to the table. Earlier there was a, the comment about the, the family runs this business. And you can really tell um, that they uh, look over all the little details um, to make to make it the, the successful brand that it is. So thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? I can't. Uh... I can't see fully if there's anybody else with their hand up because we're still sharing. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, if uh, if no one else has any comments, I, did, did we have anything, did we have something offered? Did we have a resolution offered? Madam President? Yes. I'd like to offer an approving on consent if there is no objection. All right. Well, um, I I do not want it to go on. I, I would I do not want it to be on consent. And um, I haven't done this in a long time. I think I can do it. Um, I'd like to offer and and I'd like to say that I think this is a really exciting project. I love reuses of buildings. I get I love it when people come to our community and they love our community and they use words like good bones about our buildings. The, the AT and T building is an iconic. You know, if you're not from Livonia, but if you grew up here, it, it is kind of iconic. Though the one concern that I have is all the work that we're putting into Plymouth Road and what we're trying to do with Plymouth Road. And 
and, and I think this is a tremendous brand. I have to tell you, I was looking at the branding and thinking this is really fantastic branding for self storage, you know, giving it kind of that retail feel. I mean, this looks like a, this looks like a internet retail site, right? Where you go to buy cool things. Um, I am concerned about if this is the highest and best use of a facility on Plymouth Road. And, and I, 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 I really, really like this product. I like the nature. I like the, you know, the upscale nature, if you will, the ambiance, the restricted hours, everything about it. But I, I, I guess I'd like the ability to dive a little bit deeper into if this fits with the vision for Plymouth Road. And, and I, don't, I don't have a foregone conclusion on that. I mean, we've allowed a lot of things on Plymouth Road and I, I hope the petitioner understands that this in no way is lack of enthusiasm for your project, your appreciation for the investment you're willing to make here and the thought out way you've approached this. But this is a, you know, to me, this is a big decision for a big building on Plymouth Road at a time that we're really giving a lot of attention to where we're putting things in our city. So I'd like to offer that unless uh, one of our attorneys tells me that does the president not able to I, I haven't done this a long time but i think i think i can yes so uh just a question are you looking for a resolution to put it in committee of the whole yes i'm sorry i i should have made that clear i haven't done this right i you know i haven't done this in a long time if ever in the last year and a half so um anyway but madam, madam yeah. president if Council it makes it easier uh, thanks, Madam President. If it makes it easier, I don't mind uh, offering my resolution for the committee of the whole if it just makes things cleaner from a president. Well, no, it doesn't. We, we can have multiple, well, often we have multiple resolutions and the city attorney did not tell me that I couldn't and our former, our, our, let me say our, our very capable city attorney and our very capable former assistant city attorney did not tell me that I couldn't do it and I think parliamentary rules allow me to do it. So I'm going to do that. But I, I really, and, and I know it seems counterintuitive to the, to the petitioners and maybe to Mark to hear me say that I love this, but I want to take a deeper look at it. And it, it, it's only because this is a, you know, that this is a time when I think we're really looking at what we're putting in to our major, especially where we're trying to develop retail and, and, uh, you know, dining and walkability and everything else. So thank you. But uh, uh, yes. Yeah, I, again, I there, there's no objection. You certainly have the authority to make a resolution for the committee of the whole. I just want to make sure that I have it clear. There are two resolutions on the table then. An approving by Mr. Donovic on the regular and a resolution for committee of the whole by President McIntyre. Yes, yes. All right, and, and again, I think the planning commission did a, you know, did an excellent job vetting this and all the conditions are met. So I, I, again, I know it seems counterintuitive, but that's why I'm asking for it. So the, um, the, the I'm sure you guys are very experienced in development and everything else. So what will happen at the regular meeting of May, is it May 6th? I think it's May 10th, I'm sorry. We, we, we will vote, there are two resolutions and they'll, they'll, both, um, they'll both be offered. And if the first one that's offered is approved, then we don't go to the second one, correct? Did I say that correctly, Mr. Bernier? That's correct. Okay. And if the first one fails, then we do go to the second one for a vote. But I, I think this is exciting. And I, I mean, it, again, it just it's really exciting to see a building like that with good bones at a time when all modern buildings are not built with good bones, right? They're big boxes to see somebody excited about reusing it. So thank you. And Mark, Great. thanks for the efforts to get back with us and, and present. We needed to see that. So Madam President, if I can uh, ask a question. So do, do you, are you asking us to, to present more information? No, or? no. Okay. No, not, not at all. What, 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 I'm, what I'm asking for is so uh, next week, what will happen is there'll be a, a resolution for approval presented at the at the at the uh, meeting. And no, you don't have to prepare any additional presentation. We do ask that you rejoin us via Zoom. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if 
that resolution is approved, meaning assuming that we have all four members of council with us, that we have four votes for it, then then the uh, then your um, your waiver petition is approved. If we don't have four votes, then we would go to the resolution I offered, which is to put it into committee. And presumably we would have four votes on that one. And then we would schedule a committee of the whole when, when then we would, we would ask you to participate and again via Zoom and have a deeper discussion on, um, on this. And we'd probably consult with some other folks like the Plymouth Road Development Authority and uh, any other people that we thought were significant stakeholders in whether it, it's a good idea for this facility to go on Plymouth Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, thank you. I appreciate the explanation. I mean, I, the only thing we can emphasize in that regard is, is that this, this is a rather unique office building with a grade differential. It's been Absolutely. vacant for a number of years. And yeah. in order to adaptively reuse that, reuse that building, you need some type of a use uh, such as this to be able to do so. Because it's going to be virtually impossible in this day and age to find some other type of office user to come into this type of facility that, that's built that way. Uh, to utilize it because there are other opportunities, you know, available in this area and elsewhere. So that, that's why we believe that we've we've got a viable use for this building to be able to maintain this, as you mentioned, iconic building in, in yep. Lebanon and to reuse it for productive use that's aesthetically attractive. And, and we believe that this, along with the opportunity to redevelop the out parcel next door for future retail use, will will be a draw for the Plymouth Road corridor. So we appreciate your consideration for this project. I understood, and and I just mm -hmm. and I, I know it seems counterintuitive what I've proposed, and and you know it's exactly what I said. I really do think that your proposal for this for the reuse of this building is fantastic, and it it it's everything we like to see, right? It's mm -hmm. it, again enthusiastic about our community finding a reuse for a for a really great building, and really being willing to, to work to make this a, a, an outstanding facility. Great, thank uh, you. Council Member Toy. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I can appreciate the fact that we might wanna go to Committee of the Whole. I've uh, owned a business on Plymouth Road for the past 43 years. Um, I wanna make sure that um, gives us a little bit of time to digest this a bit. There was a church in there at one point um, kind of a big building for a church, but uh, who am I to say it wouldn't be an appropriate place for a church? Uh, not that they're there now or coming back, perhaps, I don't know. But um, all I'm saying is uh, this gives us some time to digest this a bit. What you've presented, it looks like, is, is very well um, thought through, et cetera. But, um, you know, we, we the mix on Plymouth Road is what we you know, want to look at and um, in the different businesses and such that, you know, we have. So uh, thank you for coming to Livonia and thank you for presenting. Really appreciate it. All right. So so we'll just ask you to, to uh, join. And the good news is it's a regular. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of things on the agenda as of now, so it should be early in the evening and um, we'll go from there. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank we you all very much. Mm -hmm. And yeah, also it. just excellent presentation all the way around. Great, well, have thank a you. Good. All right, um, with that, we go back to, was that really our last agenda item? We go back to audience communication. If anyone in the audience would like to communicate with the council on any item that was not in the evening's agenda, now is your opportunity to do so. Calling once, calling twice, final call for audience communication. Seeing none, we are adjourned at 319. Uh, good night, Livonia. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Livonia TV. And um, everyone who uh, takes the time to join us. All right, good night, everyone.